if you're just getting started in astrophotography, there are a lot of new terms to learn. And one of these terms is stacking. Stacking the images you took in the night will greatly improve the signal to noise ratio, thus revealing a better image. Many people starting out are using Deep Sky Stacker to stack their images. It's simple to use and free, and that's why many people do it. In this video I want to explain the whole process and how to use each setting correctly to get your best image possible. The first things you need to check before importing your light frames is if all the settings are correct. In our case, if you're shooting either with a DSLR or a dedicated camera, you can either import raw DSLR files or the FIT files. FIT files are produced by dedicated cameras or if you convert your raw images to FITs in the night. So the first settings you can see in the bottom left. If you have a DSLR, that's the default setting in DSS, you're good to go. The Bayer matrix transformation depends on the Bayer matrix of a camera. For most DSLRs, the adaptive homogeneity directed is awesome. If you're working with narrowband images, they will be grayscaled and it's better to use the super pixel mode. But in our case, this would be the best. I'm working with fit files, so let's go to that section. Default, this would be ticked off. If you try to preview fit files, they seem grayscale, but they are not in reality, because they have not been debayered yet. The debayering process is what you need to tell DSS to do. So if we have fit files, you can click it and again go for the adaptive homogeneity. The software can calculate from the Bayer pattern in the camera the correct colors in the image. For DSLRs and for most dedicated cameras, RGGB is correct. So let's leave it at generic RGGB. If you have a different DSLR, you can of course choose it from the drop down list. This is good, I want to work with fit files tonight. Apply. The first thing we need to do is to load our light frames, the images we took in the night. I have the Horset Nebula folder right here. I have lights, flats, darks, darks, flats, and bias. I will not use the dark flats because they sometimes cause trouble in DSS. I will first open the light frames called picture files. I will load the dark files. If you don't know what correction frames are yet or if you want another explanation, check out my video I made on those. I will load the dark frames. I will load the flat frames in this folder right here. The number of how many calibration frames you should take is always a discussion going on. My recommendation is to get at least that was the wrong button. My recommendation is to get at least 20 of each type. With a DSLR that's sometimes hard, maybe ta to take 5 minute exposures, dark frames after the imaging session is kinda annoying, but I have the a cooled camera which I can cool manually, it's very, very convenient to use. Now we have all our images here, bias frames, flat frames, darks and lights. You can see the score value right here, also the x, the y angle, and over here the full width half maximum, the sharpness of the average star, the sky background value and the number of stars. You could now save this list to import it later for convenience. And I will click check all to select all of these images. Usually you should go through light frames at first and sort out the bad ones. I already did that. So let's choose all of those. The first thing, register checked pictures, the first option. Registering means basically analyzing the images to the number of stars, the sky background, the full width half maximum, and the score. And the score is very important. I usually take the already registered pictures. Automatic detection of all pixels is always helpful. I will not stack the images yet, I will do that later. And you can see the spa over here is green. Darks, flats and bias are checked, I have all of those. This would be red, yellow or orange if anything would be missing. Now the recommended settings over here and the stacking parameters are for stacking. We now only look at the advanced tab. We can compute the number of detected stars as a preview in one image. Let's do that. The software found 142 stars. The stars are used as alignment points for registering to align the images. 142 is good. Maybe go for 7% to detect less. 51, it was the other way around. You can use the median filter to reduce noise in the detection, not to get any hot pixels that will deform the values. And let's see, if I go for 2%, it will detect a lot of stars. Depending on your camera and telescope, this will be maybe thousands or ten thousands of stars. The calculation will take 
ages each time. A value of 150 is good, it will speed up the process dramatically if you don't have to detect 10,000 styles in each image. I will now do that. Now the calibration frames are stacked into a master calibration frame. At first the bias frame, then the dark and the flat, and they will be subtracted or divided from the light frames to calibrate them. You can see this process is going kind of fast. I just upgraded this PC and it's awesome. It's running like a hurricane. The master dark is done, master flat frame is the next. You can see that even the calibration frames are stacked and while stacking is there are options you can alter. And we'll talk about these settings in just a few minutes. Now it's gonna register the images, analyze the stars, analyze the frame and put the images and align them all ready to be ready for stacking. Now all of these images are analyzed. Let's take a look at one of those. And you can't see anything. You can maybe see some of the stars. These images are still linear. If you have a DSLR, the camera stretches these images already so that you can see something. Let's use the preview slide over here. Maybe we can see something. Pull the black point a little bit in. Now the green comes forth. And you can see only tech, a very bright star. You can see the flame nebula and if I zoom in, here is the horse head. Beautiful. And that's why you stack. You won't get anything more out of this image. But if we stack them, the result will be dramatically better. Now these images have a score value. The score is an average value based on the number of stars, the sky background and the sharpness of the star. For registering and for stacking we want to use the best light frame as the base. Basically it's called the reference frame. So these are sorted by score. The score in the images can look different each time. It's depending on your configuration of camera and telescope. I will use this as a reference frame, the image with the highest highest score. Now the images are aligned in the temporary folder and now let's go for stacking. And now the settings that are important. I will explain most of those. Let's go. At first the result mode, let's say. A standard mosaic or intersection. In the standard mode it will crop the image depending on the reference frame. If the galaxy is for example in the reference frame in the middle it will be good. If you want to preserve all the edges and don't cut away anything in the final integration, go for mosaic. And if you go for intersection mode, it will crop down a tiny bit to get rid of false edges. I usually go for intersection. The drizzling. Now, you can enable two times and three times drizzle. Drizzle is an algorithm developed by NASA for the Hubble Space Telescope. It will either double or triple the size of your image, the pixels without losing most of the resolution, because the algorithm computes new values for the pixels. The only reason to use drizzling if you want to print the image, maybe high resolution on a poster, or if you have undersampled stars in your image. Otherwise drizzling will get you nothing. If you have undersampled stars, if one star just spans a few pixels, that's the reason to drizzle and you can only drizzle if your images are dithered very well. If you don't know yet what dithering is, I have a video about that also. You can of course, of course, you can of course align the RGB channels in the final image. If you're working with Photoshop afterwards, you can of course you make that there and go full manual, which is in my opinion always better. The settings for the light frames. You can see a lot of things to click here. The best stacking mode is depending on the number of frames you have. If you have about 20 frames and more, go for average. If you have less, go for median. You can use clipping methods. The clipping is something very special, especially in astrophotography. Imagine you have in one frame a satellite going through, just a straight line. And this setting will look at this image compared with the one before where the satellite wasn't there and see this satellite does not belong to this image and will erase it. Very good to use. Especially now in these times where there are thousands of satellites in the sky. It has its limits. It won't erase like an airplane, for example, which are gigantic stripes, but it will do its best. If you have more than 30 images, go for a Kappa Sigma clipping, and DSS will also tell you before stacking which are the preferred options. If you want to produce a high dynamic range image, go for the entropy weight and average, as you can see right here, for example for Andromeda Galaxy or the Orion Nebula. 
And if you want to observe every error in your image, go for maximum. In that mode, every hot pixel, every cold pixel, satellite, star, trail, everything is coming through. And you can see it to see what the errors are in your image. I usually go for Kappa Sigma clipping. For the dark frames, this is exactly the same. Hot pixel detection and removal is always helpful. Dark optimization is typically not necessary if you have good dark frames, meaning same ISO, same temperature and same exposure time is your light frames. And also the multiplication factor, same settings, not necessary if your dark frames are good. Same counts for the flat frames and the bias and offset, nothing special here. The alignment is set to automatic and leave it on automatic. Depending on the number of stars, a different approach is good and DSS will use the best option depending on your number of stars. To the intermediate files, you can of course, after registering, save a calibrated light frame each time or save a registered light frame, an even registered light frame each time. And the final image could either be the TIFF or the FIT format. If you work with Photoshop, go for a TIFF because Photoshop can't read FIT. But I'm not going to use Photoshop, I'm going to use Pixinsight to make the final adjustments. But that's a topic of another video. We are talking about stacking. Next up is cosmetic correction. Funny story about that. The first astro image I ever took on the beautiful island of La Palma. I had this weird error. On the entire image there were little small stripes. Equal stripes on the entire image. So a friend of mine referred to those as little bows, which, which could be pretty fair. Turned out those were dithered hot pixels. So I turned on detect and clean remaining hot and cold pixels and they were gone. Useful. If you have those, choose values that just erase all of the pixels and nothing more. Because if this value is too strong, you will erase good pixels as well. And the output. Everything here is self-explanatory and you can save the image as you like. In the stacking window we can see the settings we chose and go over them again. We can see that we have 3 hours and 56 minutes of total exposure time, which is a good value, it's great. And the image will look good afterwards, finally. The recommended settings, DSS will tell you what it thinks are the best settings and typically I go for these settings. So it seems like these images have short exposures, I will go for bilinear debayering. I'm not using narrowband, if you are shooting narrowband go for super pixel mode. And we can either use the Sigma clipping or the auto adaptive. Let's go for Sigma and everything else is fine. Okay, and now let's click OK and see our final image. You can see it's computing a stacking info. If we now go into the folder where our frames are, you can see now that every light frame has a corresponding TXT file where every star is noted. Those are a lot of stars. And also there is the stack info file with all the settings which you could load in the file list as well to make processing faster if you do it again. You can see the images were already registered and calibrated so now all we have to do is to stack them. And this is going lightning fast. I upgraded this PC to an AMD Ryzen 9 24 threads, it's going through there like it's nothing. There are other options to stack your images, aside from DSS. I typically use AstroPixel Processor, which is expensive tool, but awesome to use. It will help you so much in the final processing. And you can of course use Pixinsight. Most dedicated photographers and the best astrophotographers out there are mostly using Pixinsight, and for a good reason, it's amazing. But if you're just starting out, this is free and this does a very good job, trust me. You will get good images with this one. Of course, only if you put good subframes into there. Computing the final picture now, where is this final image? We can of course see it right here. But on default, DSS saves this image in the folder of the light frames. Let's go there. Project. No, it was this one. Lights. Autosave. Here it is. Now we can't see anything in this image. Again, it's in a so-called linear state. 
When processing, we will stretch this image to a nonlinear state that we can see anything there and go on processing. But if you want to take a look at it before this, it's a fit file, remember? Ah, wonderful. If you want to take a look at fit files, I recommend the NASA Liberator 3. It works pretty well, just to preview them, not to edit them. Now let's take a look at this. Look at the horse head. It's so amazing looking. Alright, you can of course do some sort of processing in DSS, you can now load this file, but typically you want to use Photoshop or maybe Pixinsight to make the final processing, because DeepSkyStack is not really made for that. Let's try it. I have no idea how this works in the software. But I hope you got the basics down of how to use Deep Sky Stacker. In the settings down here you can see DX and DY is the shift of every image and the angle. But you can see that the angle over here is just flipped 180. That's because of the meridian flip. Let's try this out. Load this one and load this one. Flipped. That's because of the meridian flip as I said and DSS will detect that and align the images correctly. If we now go into the settings over here and in the stacking settings, you can also see the comet mode. If you want to photograph a comet, you can either drag the comet or drag the stars. It will be a problem either way, because if you drag the stars, the comet will move, and if you drag the comet, the stars will move. You can choose both, it will do both types of alignment and blend the images, but before that you need to go through every single light frame and mark the position of the comet in the combat mode over here, which is annoyingly, which is an annoyingly long time of work. But in my case, the horse head is right here and it looks amazing. I will show you the final process picture at the end. If you want to see the processing in Photoshop, I am terribly bad in processing with Photoshop. I usually do it with Pixinsight. I have many Pixinsight tutorials over on the YouTube channel. And if you want to work with that data, check out my Patreon account where I share my imaging data. I hope I did not forget anything. If you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an Astro Addict, I wish you clear skies, and may the night be with us.